In the Mediterranean Sea, east of Spain, you'll find the Balearic Islands. This island group consists of more than 50 islands and is known for its mix of natural beauty, history, culture, but above all, its vibrant nightlife. In November, I visited the largest island in this archipelago. Welcome to Mallorca. November also marks the end of the high season. The temperature drops to a pleasant 18 degrees Celsius, and many hotels, bars and restaurants temporarily close. With the departure of numerous tourists, this is the perfect time to explore the island in peace. Because the island is relatively large, I chose to divide my trip into two locations. From the town of Can Picafort, I explored the northern part of the island in the first week. This location is a popular seaside resort for many tourists and is known for its beautiful beaches and distinctive obelisk-shaped towers. In total, there are 28 of these towers, which are characteristic of Can Picafort and were built between 1941 and 1970 to emit light signals to military submarines. During a coastal walk to the east of the resort, you will encounter one of the oldest archaeological sites on the island, Necropolis de Sun Real. This ancient cemetery dates back to the 7th century BC and consists of 110 graves of various forms. In the past, remains of around 300 people, along with discovered jewelry, metal objects, and ceramics, have been found here. Visiting this historic site is only possible by walking along the coast or through the dune area. The first hike I undertook was the ascent of Puig de Ferrets in the middle range mountain Ceres de Levant on the east side of the island. The starting point of the hike is at the Ermita de Betlam Monastery. There is only one route to the top, measuring five and a half kilometers, for the return, you follow the same path. The summit is at an elevation of approximately 520 meters and stands out prominently in the surroundings. Rising from the plain of the Bay of Alcudia, the mountain is visible from afar. This also provides a panoramic view over the bay and the flat land of Mallorca from the top. The entire route takes about three and a half hours and is considered a moderately challenging hike. In the most eastern part of the island, near the town of Capdepra, you'll find a medieval castle. It was built in the 13th century for defense against pirate attacks from the Mediterranean Sea. With its thick stone walls and towers, it boasts impressive architecture and offers a panoramic view of the surrounding landscape and the town. The castle is accessible on foot from the winding streets of the town. Within the walls, you'll find towers, a church with a terrace, and the governor's house. Due to its history, beautiful architecture, and the view, a visit to this town and the castle is indispensable when exploring this area. On the Alcudia Peninsula, you'll find one of the most beautiful hikes in Mallorca, the climb to Peñal del Migdia. For this hike, there are two options. A short route of about 4 kilometers, starting at the Church Ermita de la Victoria, or the long route of 11 kilometers, starting at the parking lot of Plaza de Calbakes. I chose the long route, which also takes you to the highest point of this mountain range, Talaya de Alcudia. Here, you'll discover various remnants of ancient structures, making it a lovely spot to take a break. 
The continuation of the hike takes you along various rock formations, with the last kilometer leading along steep cliffs, and even requiring passage through a small tower. A steep final climb brings you to the highest point at 355 meters above sea level. This spot houses a cannon from 1630 and offers an incredible view of the sea and the surrounding mountains. A visit to Mallorca should not be complete without exploring the most northern part of the island, Cap de Formentor. In my opinion, this impressive landscape is one of the most beautiful spots on the island. The peninsula is accessible via a winding, picturesque road that meanders through steep cliffs and stunning nature. The dramatic, rocky mountains, coupled with the azure blue sea, provide an unforgettable view at every turn. One of these viewpoints is the Mirador de El Colomer at the beginning of the route, offering various vantage points to appreciate the area from all angles. The historical Torre de Albercuts near the viewpoint is also worth a visit, this tower was built in the 16th century as a watchtower over the Mediterranean Sea. At the end of the route awaits the breathtaking lighthouse of Cap de Formentor. This distinctive white lighthouse, built in 1863, stands atop the cliffs, providing a stunning view. From the end point, the winding last kilometer of the route is also clearly visible. This location is the ideal spot to take a moment to relax from the overwhelming journey and enjoy the scenery, before experiencing the route from a different perspective on the way back. In 1925, the 13.5-kilometer long road was built to the lighthouse. Before that, the only ways to reach the lighthouse were by water or the mule track. A significant part of this long path is still accessible and offers a completely different perspective of the island. From the path, you can venture up to the highest peak of Cap de Formentor, El Fumat. This iconic mountain stands at a height of 384 meters, and from its highest point, almost the entire peninsula is visible including the lighthouse on its northernmost part. If you wish to explore this breathtaking part of Mallorca, carefully consider the options beforehand. The area is often closed to cars during the high season due to congestion, but these restrictions are less prevalent in the low season. In terms of landscape, Mallorca can be divided into two parts, the relatively flat terrain in the center and east of the island, and the rugged mountainous landscape in the west. The rugged west is known as the Serra de Tramontana, stretching approximately 90 kilometers from the southwest to the north. Since 2011, this natural park has been recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, ensuring its protection and preservation. The mountain range attracts many hikers due to the numerous trails that traverse it. One of these hikes is the ascent of Mallorca's second-highest peak, Puig de Massanella. With an elevation of 1364 meters, the climb to the top is a considerable challenge and not suitable for everyone. The route I followed starts at the Luck Monastery and takes about 6 hours. In total, you cover a distance of 16 kilometers in a loop trail with an elevation gain of over 1100 meters, including some steep climbs. 
Due to the lengthy route, you get to experience various landscapes and enjoy beautiful views from all sides of the mountain range. In the northeast of the island lies the picturesque town of Arda. The city is home to several ancient structures that date back to Roman times. One of the most remarkable attractions is the Sanctuary of Sant Salvador. This sanctuary is a religious monument that rises high above Arda on the Puig de Sant Salvador hill. Within the old walls, there is a church that was built in the 14th century. The ascent of the mountain not only provides the experience of the sanctuary but also offers a beautiful view of the city. On the east coast of the island, you will find several stalactite caves. The largest and most touristy one is Coves del Drach, located on the southeast side of the island near Porto Cristo. The route through the cave is over a kilometer long and takes about an hour. Midway through the cave, there is a large underground lake with a theater, where an orchestra performs a concert during each guided tour on a rowboat. This unique concert enhances the experience of this impressive cave. Beside the caves, the east coast attracts many visitors with its beautiful rocky cliffs, white beaches, and the azure blue sea. As well as various attractions such as the Torre dels Falcons near the stalactite caves. As part of a larger system of towers, this tower was built in 1577 and served as a watch and signal tower. A bit further south along the coast, you will find a beautiful natural area, Cala Varks. This place offers a stunning sandy beach between the cliffs and a natural rock bridge that makes the location unique. The area is only accessible on foot from the parking lot along the MA-4014. A walk of about two and a half kilometers will lead you to the beach. The last hike I did in the first week is located in the northern part of the Tramontana Mountains and involves the ascent of Puig de Cornavax. The starting point is in the town of Cala Sant Vicenc, after which you complete the first part via a relatively good gravel road. The second part consists of the climb using cairns that lead you to the top of the mountain at an altitude of 545 meters above sea level. The route, with views of Cap de Formentor and the steep cliffs you walk along, is breathtakingly beautiful. Once you reach the top of the mountain, you are surprised by the panoramic view over the northern part of the mountain range. With the length of 10 kilometers and an average duration of 4 to 5 hours, this hike is relatively challenging, especially the steep descent is a challenge. The final stop of this video takes us to Alcudia. This ancient medieval town boasts numerous historic buildings, including churches, city gates, and even a genuine Roman theater. A stroll along the old city walls provides a comprehensive view of the city in every aspect. In the next video, 
we will explore the southern areas with many beautiful locations once again. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.